Um, so continue those conversations in the, in the break. Um, but now I'd like to invite Sam George from the Bertelsmann Foundation to the stage. Sam's going to um, debut a trailer for the new documentary about Cuba's digital revolution. So we really are covering um, the gamut here of policy issues and locations. So Sam, please come to the stage. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank uh, in particular to FOSI and Stephen. It's really been a pleasure on behalf of the Bertelsmann Foundation to be able to collaborate with this organization. Uh, it's always been a really fruitful conversation and, and some of the events we've been able to do. So we definitely appreciate being here today. Uh, my name is Sam George. I'm the Global Markets and Digital Advisor um, at the Bertelsmann Foundation. And over the last year, we've been looking really around the world at how the digital revolution is impacting different countries because this isn't just the kind of things we were just hearing about. It's not just a United States thing, that it's really affecting the whole world and in different ways. So we went to India, we've been in Germany, we were in the United States, of course, um, Israel, been to Africa and Mozambique. And then one of the countries we did was Cuba. And the question that we got from a lot of Cubans and a lot of people here is, well, why, why are you doing Cuba? Um, and I, I think part of the answer we heard in the previous panel that we're getting so used to these um, digital mechanisms that are always on or always listening or, or always ready. And up until recently in Cuba, everything was always off. Up until just a couple years ago, they were almost completely in the dark. None of the digital technology, the, the internet, I mean, I'm just talking about basic online functionality, had not reached the island. And now we're in a moment where it has, and it creates this fascinating case study that, you know, it's almost like boiling water, that if we get in it, when we got in it in the 90s, and you used to have to be on the computer with the AOL, and, and when grandpa called, it would knock you offline. And, and now we're at this point with the always-on technology. We hardly even notice how deeply it's become ingrained in our life, but that's not the case in Cuba, because they didn't have it at all, and now suddenly they have it. Um, and it's really a, a fascinating case study to see what is the impact of that. Um, and there's the benefits. There's, uh, what we've seen there is that people have been able to engage in the kind of conversation online that they couldn't have offline. So as you might imagine, political dialogue is very, very restricted in Cuba. It's still a very fast way to get arrested is to say anything publicly that might fall afoul of the government. But we find that young people are increasingly expressing themselves politically uh, on the internet. And I, when I was in Havana, I interviewed one of these young bloggers and said, you know, aren't you afraid to be publishing this stuff? And he looked at me and said, I've never been afraid of the internet. And that's really where you see the opportunities come in. But then there's also the challenges, some of the things we talked about there, some of the things that the internet uh, brings access to, whether it's violent content or mature content, this is a society that didn't have that kind of access to it that now immediately has it. And that can be a scary proposition, especially for parents. Um, I think the last thing I would say is one thing that fascinates me about Cuba is it's really undergoing three transitions at once. Um, it's going, undergoing an economic transition from this sort of socialist to slowly more and more private opportunities. It's very slowly undergoing a political transition as the older guard starts to retire and some younger, more modernizing politicians come in. And then it's undergoing this digital transition where it's suddenly going from completely offline to slowly but slowly more and more online. And I think one thing that we were really looking forward, looking to on the ground is the fastest of those three might be the digital. And how does that affect those other transitions? How does it affect political dialogue? How does it affect the ability to partake in private sector enterprise? And how can it be done in a fair and equitable and safe way? Um, so what I'd like to show now is just a brief introduction from the film. Uh, the whole film can be found on our website, uh, which is bfna.org. You can also just Google search uh, Cuba's Digital Revolution. Uh, I'd love if you would check it out. and. Um, as I always say, it's a conversation starter. So if you like it, don't like it, disagree, um, we're happy to be here today to be part of that conversation. So uh, thank you very much and a big thank you to FOSI.